First, first Thessalonians, that's better. <laughs> Fifth chapter, 12th to the 13th verse. Amen. I ain't going to have you stand any long. Amen. Everybody got it? I see everybody still looking on their phones. Amen. Amen. The people who got their Bibles, open it up real fast. <laughs> Amen. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and over you in the Lord and, and, and admonishing you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. You may be seated. Amen. Today, uh, title for this lesson is celebrating our faithful shepherd. The shepherd is God called anointed person who are in charge with feeding and protecting and leading and admonishing the sheep under his care. He is a gift from God. What is a pastor? The word pastor is derived from the Latin word now, which means shepherd. The term pastor is also related to elders in the New uh, Testament church, and you'll find the same biblical understanding even as minister. The pastor preacher has been called to commission many things, but the pastor in charge of commissioning and going on uh, protecting and preaching and hearing up the word of God. The preacher has been armed with the word of God. And God has placed it in his heart and his lips that the preacher pastor has a greater task in handling the work of God. And handling the work of God with care, compassion, and commitment to the people. The preaching of the gospel is the bedrock of his calling in the center of the mission of God. God has called a faithful steward who manages God's resources and Christ Jesus, uh, the flock, had said that how we should be caring on the flock. The pastor is the response, has the responsibility, but not ownership. The word uh, many people from the word of God has the wrong concept about the pastor. Sometimes they want to give him a church employee as a title. Or maybe give him a team manager. Or give, make him the CEO of the church. All of these titles doesn't mean anything. But those who are really understanding the role of, of the shepherd, he is a God called an anointed person who's in charge with feeding and protecting and leading and admonishing his sheep under his care. Yeah. Jeremiah said, I will give you, Jeremiah 3rd chapter 15 verse said, I will give you according to my heart. I will give you pastors according to my heart. And he shall feed you in, with knowledge and understanding. And that's what the, that our pastor does. He preaches and gives us knowledge and understanding. I know you all appreciate your pastor. And we're here because of this special recognition. So I have, I, you have to ask yourself, what can I do for my pastor? And there are some of everything in the church that's biblical that we can do. We must understand that the pastor and every believer should do some special things for him. The first thing you should do is really get to know your pastor. And you need to get acquainted with him. You highly regard your pastor. And for his sake, the work of the master's work is done through him. He has many, many trials, and his work is hard to endeavor. 
He has to cheer on the heart of the people. Acknowledge the fact that your pastor is unique. Somebody say amen. amen. He has his own personal style, his own personality, his own gifts and traits. It's all unique to him. So just let him be the who he is. Don't start pulling out a measuring stick or anything. Throw that away. The best thing you can do to know your pastor is take some time and sit across the table with him and have a conversation. The next thing we should understand that we should highly regard our pastor. The Christian ministers who preach the whole truth, who labor in the word with doctrine, who's entertained more than with respect. The apostles commanded to extend things to pastor abundantly and super abundantly. And it's, they're able to be done through love. I've seen many men at Mount Pleasant, who love the pastor. They reach in their pocket, and they pull out some love and put it in the pastor's hand. Come on, somebody. And then there are the women of the church who love the pastor and delighted to serve. They are delighted to serve the pastor and his wife. Now, women get, they, they get so happy in trying to serve the pastor, they serve him with food. Amen? They serve him with baked goods. And, and I want you to understand, they love and they don't ignore him. Now, I pastored for 22 years, and I came in weighing 145 pounds. But after the love of the women in the church serving, <laughs> I was up to 160. <laughs> now, I ain't going to tell you what I, is, I am now. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, at one time I was preaching the word, and I talked about, uh, about how David say, taste and see how the Lord is good. And I messed around and said, I love pies. I'm a pie person. I like apple pie. I like pecan pie. Uh, I told him my favorite, my favorite is lemon meringue pie. Thank you, Jesus. I went on and preached, but Monday, somebody brought some lemon meringue pie to the, home, to the house. Then they bought, and I, when I came home, my wife had two lemon meringue pies. On Wednesday, two more lemon meringue pies showed up. <laughs> Friday, there was another lemon meringue pie. I, 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 I didn't know what to do. The wife was like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. You shouldn't be talking about what you want to eat. You got to watch it. So I, I, I've been careful ever since then about what I say about food. The Lord is good, and I'm told how great he is and what he have already done. And it's in, fifth, in Thessalonians, first chapter, 15 verse, he, he pastor is highly regarded. He speaks honorably and respectful to him. He deserves your highest opinion. He's a messenger of God, and he's a shepherd and teacher. He takes care of his sheep and provides for them. He, we know that he esteemed them. He loved them and cared for them and remembered them. Now, the next thing is that we must remember our pastor. Remember him at the throne of grace. And remember the fact that he has been, has been said after the pastor has been serving the church for a long time. The whole church takes a bit of his style and personality. As we look at the pastor, he has certain styles and personalities. Look at all they are. 
Come here, Pastor. I'm going to do like you. <laughs> All of us got the same personality and style that Pastor Simmons has. Amen. Amen. We have the same style and personality. Look, he loved football, but not just football. He loved the Cleveland Browns. Uh, amen. Come on, come on. So as we look around our congregation, we see all of us who came in and taken on the personal styles of Pastor Simmons. We know this to be true, that churches can come through and work with the pastor. And through prayer and that imprint of the soul, we take on the same. Prayer has been something of a, print, a principle of anointing for his preaching. He's a humble and patient, faithful and full of joy. Pray for the Lord constant renewal of the passion for Christ. His, in the church, uh, he looked for just not the church, but the unsaved church. He remember, we should remember that our pastor is the first priority is his family. Just like every other Christian man who's a provider, and a protector and the priest of, for his wife and family, don't let the church pull him away at all because it will leave a bad taste in his family when we create unnecessary frictions. Amen? Right. Ain't that right, Sister Simmons? Right. You say that all right? <laughs> we have to follow the pastor. Now, I'm not talking about stalking him. I'm talking about following his commitment in his doctrine. Follow as he shows the way of faith in the word by example. He is not a leader if he has nobody to follow. Follow him because he follows Christ. Follow him and give him support and assistance. Yeah, in, in all of us, there's some one of us who has special s skills and do, can do work around. Sometimes the pastor himself cannot do all the work. We have to come in and help our pastor because he may have other things that he needs to do. There are some things that he can't do, but you can do. Follow him with joy and commitment. You have to look at things that have negative comments and when you're following your pastor. There's some people that make a negative comment about the pastor. And you must respond with a positive one. If it's someone that has some misinformation and is being spread, you should be the one to correct them. Sometimes... You just got to be silent and just walk away. And that brings a lot of volume and understanding. We have to look and take care of our pastor. When there's something going wrong and misinformation and stuff, you have to, as members of the congregation, correct them. Express appreciation, appreciation from the time he start coming in. We should take a time to do a praise box for Pastor Simmons. You put a box in there, just like we do cards, we do birthday cards, we do uh, we do uh, anniversary cards. But the great thing we could do is get a box and do praise cards for the pastor. Slip your praise cards in that box. Sometimes when he's feeling down and doom during the day, he can reach in the praise box and bring something up that cheers him up. That's really following up with your pastor. More than praise, he's a hard worker. And we celebrate him for that. Like your pastor, uh, the pastor is another work of grace. 
he follow he he he's fellowship and witness with the truth. The flesh and blood and testimony of the goodness of God. We have lived a life shallow under the cross, wanting to know Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. Open your mouth and praise and bless him and give good words and gifts to him. You got to be a follower of faith and a sharer of the good news. The pastor wants to know you better. He wants to know his members better than they are. We want to be more Christ-like and help others to do the same. I, I want us to, to, us to know to live beyond human limits. That empowers us by the Holy Spirit. Show regards to your pastor. Here's the other thing that we should be doing. Regard your pastor by being pray, prayerful. In Hebrew 13, chapter 7, verse, it says, Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, who have been faithful to you. Consider the outcome of their conduct. Look at all the good, the good that come from their lives and follow the example of faith. The best thing that we can do for our pastor is pray for him. Is pray for him. Pastor's day is a day uh, that he's lifted up from the mountains and the valley. Days and days, sometimes the pastor is high and sometimes it's low. So we need to be praying for him when he's on a mountain high in a valley low. He needs our prayers. He needs our prayers for the work of the ministry. As you pray for him, and we should all succeed, be successful in the work among us. Pray for your pastor to succeed. Pray for the uh, foremost of the ministry to keep the ministry of his family, to make the ministry of his family his first thought. Pray for the pastor. That, that God will answer his prayer. Our pastor will be quali a qualified men member to others uh, serving our church. It's just not pastor, but the pastor passes over the ministers of the church. Pray for him that he give energy to every pastor and minister in the church. Pray for his spiritual health. Pray for what the, the work that God is doing in his life as he walks for God. The work of the pastor can only be accomplished by the Holy Spirit. Pray for his mental health. Pray for the fa facing the dozens of decisions that he has to work. Pray for the physical health. Pray for experience of peace only that God can give. Pray that he needs prayer and work in over the leadership. Pray that he's watching out, but we, we're watching out for our pastor for any tra any traps that fall he can fall through. In First Timothy third chapter seven verse, also people outside the church must speak well, so that they will so that he will not be regarded. Get re disregarded and fall into the Satan's trap. You see, Satan is always threatening and he has intent to set a trap for the pastor. The pastor is already targeted to and, and look because God is being defeating him. So it's a, he's an enemy of God. Satan always is trying to ruin pastor's residence. Reputation. Satan is trying to bring down our pastor. The work of the church will be hurt. So we can we need to do everything that we can do through prayer that his the pastor's reputation will not be taken down. It shouldn't surprise us because we hear so much mortal failure of other pastors. 
And the devil would do anything with greed and adultery, anger, and addiction just to ruin them. But God has more power than Satan. Than Satan. God works through us with prayer. So we pray for prayer and protection for our pastor. So that he might set a good example. Oh, yes. He needs prayer. He needs prayer before the work that's done before him. As he's preaching. People need to hear about so how we pray for our pastor. Let me tell you a story about Charles Spurgeon. He's just a wonderful pastor that was lived a long time ago. But he had a church that he, people would come in and they would want to talk to him. They wanted to come to his church and hear him preach. He said before the church gets started and the prayers and, and everything that happens, he said, I want you to come down to my power plant. And then when they came down in the basement, there was hundreds and hundreds of people down on their knees praying for him. And Spurgeon said, this is my power plant. We come together. Mount Pleasant, our ministry through leadership and all of that. We must support our pastor with prayer. I think we ought to have our own power plant here in, in Mount Pleasant. All of us praying. We got a prayer line. With the senior citizens, we pray every time for the pastor, every day for the pastor. After getting off the prayer line, we say, we're going to pray later on the night before we go to bed. I, I, I need some people to, to help with the power plant, to pray. The mission of his work is prayer over his leadership, prayer over the work before us. Show peace with others and focus on the church and the pastor. The church is the purpose that comes through and fulfills the Great Commission. The church must have an attitude of honor. Many of us with the, who in the church do not understand what the pastor does with his time. Oh, you see him on Sunday. You don't see him until next Sunday. What does he do with his time? Let, 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 let me bring a, a few things to you. Sometimes he's a lawyer. Sometimes he's a social worker. Sometimes he's an editor. Sometimes he's a bit of philosopher and entertainer. Sometimes He's the front man in public function. Sometimes he's supposed to be the scholar. You know what he does? He visits the sick. He marries people. He buries loved ones. He labors for the people and who is in sorrow. He admonishes those who's in sin. He tries to stay sweet even though the people are chiding about what he's doing. He sets up programs. He, uh, he brings together and appoints committees. He spends considerable time keeping each, each of you out of each other's hair. Between those times, he's preparing to preach his sermon. We are here because we're celebrating a faithful pastor. We came here today to celebrate the pastor because we personally know the pastor. We came today to celebrate and esteem the highly, he highly worked. We came here today to celebrate and remember the faithfulness. We came here today to celebrate and follow his leadership. We came here today to praise because he teaches and preaches and it's worthy. We came here today because we deserve, he deserves respect. We came here today to celebrate his sacrifice that he deserved and his appreciation. We came here today 
to give double honors because he does well with his church. When we come here to bless the pastor, we bless ourselves. When we're blessing the pastor, we bless ourselves. More than that, when we bless the pastor, we begin to also praise God. Over in Ephesians 6, chapter 19, verse. Pray also for me whenever I speak. Words may be given so to me. For I am fearless and be made known of the mystery of the gospel. He knows the mystery of the gospel. So we should be praying for him. The praise of God is also in him. This man loved praise. He loved when the choir prayed. Every time they start singing and praising, he got to get up. He's got to be moving. Amen. Because they're praising, he's praising God. Words can lift up your spirit. Sometimes those who come to church are wounded. Spirit worn out, weary. Sometimes they need the power of God in the spirit to lift them up. Uh, sometimes uh, they, we need to change our attitude and we can motivate in the midst of misery that they have. The story is told that a woman would go six days a week cleaning houses for someone. Six days a week. And every Sunday, she'd get up and go to church, working six days a week and 13 hours a day. The word of God can lift you up in every situation. If we're wondering how to make it through because of weakness, that's because of the grace of God. If we're wondering how we are going to make it, God supply all of our needs. If we're feeling lonely and forsaken, God's promises to never leave you. I want you to know if you're doubting about the power and 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 everything that got provisions that God gives him. He's the same yesterday, and today he's the same forevermore. As pastors have liberated the world, the word, the word is, and I is in all of us that we have to have the word of an awesome word that's connected us through God. See, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the good shepherd. I am the uh, alpha and omega. I am the bread of life. I am the door. He preaches the word to set us free. Set us free from sin in the past. Don't you remember the woman who was caught in adultery? Don't you remember the thief on the cross? Don't you remember, don't you remember Saul changed to Paul? The preaching of Christ lifts up and liberates you from free from free from being in pain and struggle. You remember about the man with 38 years by the pool. The man called beautiful by the gate. The woman with an issue of blood. They, they were all lifted up. Do you have a lifting word? There's a pastor named Dwayne Simmons is here to lift you up with liberating words. Pastors have living words, word to preach that's alive and active, power of the word that's relevant, and then not only that, it's radiant that they give you. The guy that you have lost, sometimes that you have lost your direction. Pastors give words to guard you from the enemies and who's trying to destroy destroy you. The word is a lie. It walks in me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. I don't know about you, but I know about my pastor walking with Jesus. Jesus talking to him. 
Tell them it's about you or my own. Yeah, I don't know. I love it when Jesus walks with me. I love it when Jesus talks to me. That's living word. Water, may you may be considered. It won't drown you. The fire don't burn you with frustration. Winds are adversaries that try to blow you away. But the word of God is alive. The word brings you joy and not sadness. The word brings you peace out of confusion. The word brings you hope when I'm hurting. The word brings you comfort when you're discomforted. It's alive. The word is, is, is great and alive. They nailed him to the cross. They put a spear in his sack. They buried him with a tomb. He rose again, and he said, I am alive. The word preaches is alive. Preachers preach the living word because God lives. God lives. That's why we preach the word. Jesus lives today. So you ask me how I know because he lives in me. He lives in my heart. He lives in my soul. I don't know about you. I'm already encouraged. I feel his spirit. Those who are timid hearted and faithful that may be thinking how persecuted times is, how things work, and how confused. Pastors help the weak. Give it to the whole church. Pastors have a sense of community. A sense of community and responsibility. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. Respect your leaders. Love your leaders. Get along with one another. Take responsibilities to one another. Let mercy triumph over vengeance. Uh, over, over vengeance. Vengeance or arguments. Somebody who's wrong. Believe me, I said, God's here. The church leaders are actively doing. I pray that our church will be healthy and make up a strong commitment to our pastor in the word of God.